Hi everybody, this is Dr. Nelson. Uh, this is a brief video about how to solve equations that have variables on both sides of the equation. All right, so far you've learned how to solve a one-step equation and a two-step equation. This is just one extra part. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some problems together. So please copy what I write down. And then there'll be some for you to try by yourself. And then you can see how you did um, at the end. So let's take a look at your notes here. And the first problem we have is 4n plus 12 equals 6n plus 8. So I'm sure you can tell there, there's a variable on both sides. So we have a choice. We can either take away 4n from both sides or take away 6n from both sides. I'm going to go with the first choice, which is take away 4n from both sides. So that when we do that, these cancel out. That's the whole point of this move. So 12 is going to equal 2n plus 8. And now it's just a two-step equation. So we're going to take away 8 from both sides. That's the constant, right? So now we have 4 equals 2n. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 because it's a coefficient, right? The 2's cancel out. And 4 divided by 2 is, is 2. And again, one nice thing about this is we can take that 2 and plug it back into the original. Uh, so 4 times 2, that is going to be 8. And 8 plus 12 is 20, right? So if I plug in 2 here, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 8 is 20. So we know it's right. All right, let's try this next one. Um, so we have negative 3n plus 15 equals 6n plus, uh, sorry, minus 12. I'm going to add 3n to both sides. So 15 equals 9n minus 12. And then I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So that's the constant, right? These cancel out. I'm going to continue over here. So 15 plus 12 is 27 equals 9n. And what's the next step? That's right. You're going to divide both sides by 9, right? And 27 divided by 9 is 3. So again, we're not quite done. Let's plug it back in and see if it works. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 15 is 6, right? So we want this side to equal 6 also. Uh, 6 times 3 is 18. And 18 take away 12 is 6. It's right. All right, welcome back. Let's see how you did with the problems here. All right, so the first one, 10 times P plus 14 equals 6 times P plus 28. So step number one, I'm going to, uh, I can either take away 10P or take away 6P. Uh, I'm going to actually take away 6P from both sides. So now we have 4 times P plus 14 equals 28. All right, so now our goal is to solve this P here, right? So the opposite of adding 14 is take away 14. So now we have 4P equals 14. Uh, 14. The viable size by 4. And P is going to be, let's see, 4 goes into 14 three times. We have 2 left over, so it's going to be 3 and a half. How'd, how'd you do? Did you th get that one right? All right, now the next one. Uh, there's one step we have to do first before we solve. And notice the left-hand side, we can simplify because we have an 8P and a 2P. So 8P and 2P together add up to 10P. So 10P plus 12 is going to equal 43 minus 1P. So now we have P's on both sides, so I'm going to either take away 10P or add 1P. Uh, I think it's easier just to add 1P to both sides. So now we get 11P plus 12, that's a plus, equals 43. And now it's just solving a two-step equation, right? So I'm going to take away 12 from both sides. 
So we get 11p equals 31. And then I have to divide both sides by 11, right? So when I do that, uh, let's see, 31 divided by 11 is going to be 2 with 9 left over. So it'll be 2 and 9 elevenths. And there's your, there's your answer. Okay, so again, the way I got that is I divided 31 by 11 to get P by itself. All right, how'd you do?